Welcome back to this last session of our international conference, Diplomacy Now, an appeal to peace in Ukraine. Um, this is hosted by the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation. My name is Ines Schwerter. This is my colleague Inga Solting. We've been hosting this conference tonight, and I welcome everyone um, who's now online with us uh, in the Zoom and with everyone who's watching this on the 1st of September, the World Peace Day. We now come out of this um, whole conference even more convinced that we need to have a plea for a diplomatic solution to the war in Ukraine. It has global impacts. Like the world does not want a new block confrontation. It does not want a cold war that we're being ushered into as a result of the war in Ukraine um, because it does not make the world safe. Um, deterrence does not make the world safe only cooperation makes it safe, not conflict. It's a question of decline or development, and we prefer development instead of decline. And that's why we are pushing forward with this international plea for diplomacy now. And of course, this conference can only be a starting point. It was always meant as a starting point. It is uh, something to bring together um, international voices, um, also from different organizations. I think we need a new starting point, we need a new initiative, this is why we're now uh, reading out the appeal for diplomacy now. And so now the floor to Luciana and to Heinz with um, the appeal for diplomacy now. We political activists, intellectuals and citizens who have signed this plea for a coherent, universal, an international diplomatic initiative for peace in Europe and the world are convinced of the following. The bloodshed and destruction in Ukraine must end. We stand with the people of Ukraine and all victims of this war who deserve peace, reconstruction and freedom as soon as possible. Nevertheless, one thing is clear, neither peace no reconstruction and freedom will be possible without negotiations. Only 20% of all interstate wars end in clear victory or defeat, and even then, often only after many years. Civil society and the international community must therefore make every effort to pave the way for armistice, followed by talks for a lasting peace. Even if negotiations ended early on during, on during the war, and even if ever since neither the Russian nor the Ukrainian government have shown their willingness to negotiate beyond prisoners' exchanges, the export of agriculture produce and the like, an end to violence and negotiations for peace can also be broken. It is not enough to wait for the government in Kiev and Moscow to come to the table on their own or for the fatigue of those caught in this bloody war of attrition to force them to do so. We here in Germany, Europe and the West are tired of only discussing which game-changing weapons to deliver next, we want to develop ways of how Western government can help to actually facilitate peace talks. It is important to take up the diplomatic initiatives from China, Brazil, the African and other countries in order to move the warring parties towards an end to the war. We must push Western governments, which are currently more preoccupied with paving the way for a new bloc confrontation with China and Russia instead of demonstrating genuine solidarity with the people of Ukraine. As we all know, perspectives on the current war vary considerably across the international left. Nevertheless, we believe that a common position is possible, a united appeal for negotiations and pressure on our governments to invest not only in weapons but in diplomacy because what is at stake is peace, freedom, countless lives and also the democratic prospects of Ukraine and Russia. 
we must take up the question of how to ensure peace and security in Europe without further rearmament and the new militarist called war mentality. In the, interest, in the interest of addressing humanity's great historic challenges, social justice, climate change, and democratic participation, we must act today and prevent a new block confrontation. Ending the war in Ukraine and creating peace is the starting point for this. I hope that this appeal will contribute and help our goal, which is to achieve a sure and endless peace. Please, all the speakers, come forward to the stage. And to give a short, a short comment, a short presentation on why we're signing this appeal today, what you've taken from this conference today, and how we should go forward. I think, uh, Evgeny, I will give you the first word. Uh, thank you very much for the organization of this conference. And, uh, uh, you know, I would like to add some words and the final uh, resolution about the words with solidarity, not only with Ukrainian people, but with the people who are living in Kursk region, in Belgrade region, you know, more than uh, two, uh, more than uh, 100,000 uh, people from Kursk region were um, forced to leave their houses. It, uh, there are peaceful uh, citizens, and uh, I uh, suggest uh, to uh, add the words of solidarity with them too. Uh, they, they are not blamed in this war, and they are suffering of this war like Ukrainians. Thank you very much. Okay, my name is Gesine Lutsch. I'm a member of the German Parliament, of course, of the Left Party, and I'm a member, of course, of the Budget Committee. And uh, two years ago, in the summertime, I was with a little delegation from the Budget Committee in the United States of America, and we had a lot of discussions with politicians, with firms, uh, with a lot of people. And I always raised the question what about diplomacy? And they told us, no, it's too early. This fight has to be decided on the battlefield. And I, my opinion, that's very awful. And the second very impressive thing was that every one from the US side said, first he fights the Russia fight, then he fights the China fight. And my answer was, no, we have to fight for peace. Ja, ich habe ja vorhin schon äh, länger dazu gesprochen zum Thema, deswegen nur in aller Kürze. Ich finde es gut, dass wir diese Konferenz haben, dass die internationalen Stimmen für Frieden und für Abrüstung lauter werden, dass wir deutlich machen, äh, dieser Krieg, dieser Angriff Russlands ist ein Verbrechen und wir sind solidarisch mit allen Menschen in der Ukraine, die darunter leiden. Wir sind solidarisch mit den mutigen Menschen in Russland, die sich gegen den Krieg stellen und gegen Putin und wir sind solidarisch mit all denen, die den Kriegsdienst verweigern. Und zentral ist für mich, dass wir uns dieser beispiellosen Aufrüstung, die wir erleben in Deutschland, aber auch in anderen Ländern, dass wir uns der entgegenstellen, gegen die nukleare Abschreckung, gegen die Zeitenwende, gegen die Stationierung von US-Mittelstreckenraketen. Das halte ich für absolut zentral und ich denke, dass diese Konferenz einen guten Beitrag dazu geleistet hat, einen internationalen Austausch zu haben und diese Stimmen lauter zu machen. Ich glaube, der Zeitpunkt, die Initiativen zu setzen, um diesen Krieg zu beenden, ist jetzt. 500.000 Tote, hunderte zerstörte Städte, Dörfer, vier Millionen Menschen auf der Flucht. Wann, wenn nicht jetzt, diesen Krieg beenden? Diesen Krieg beenden durch politische Anstrengungen und die Europäische Union hätte die Verpflichtung, im Interesse der Völker der Ukraine, im Interesse der Völker Russlands und im Interesse aller europäischen Völker einen Beitrag dazu zu leisten, dass dieser Krieg nun ein Ende findet. Europa steht vor der Wahl, Kooperation oder Konfrontation, Aufrüstung oder Abrüstung, Aufrüstung oder sozialer und ökologischer Fortschritt. 
Ich möchte der Rosa-Luxemburg-Stiftung danken, diese Initiative gesetzt zu haben. Jetzt ist der Moment, wo die Völker sprechen müssen, wo die Politiker der Europäischen Union versagen. Ich unterschreibe diesen Appell sehr gerne. Ich fühle mich geehrt, eingeladen zu sein, ihn zu unterschreiben. Und ich möchte versprechen, dass die Partei der Europäischen Linken alles in ihrer Macht stehende tun wird, diesen Appell in ganz Europa zu verbreiten. Danke vielmals. I'm very happy tonight. And I can speak Japanese only. Tokoto, translation. I came here all over from Japan, more than 14,000 kilometers. The distance is very far. This land of Berlin. And many places in Europe. And uh, I actually have the direct experience that there are so many people who love peace in here. And I'm very happy, really happy today. And uh, we are live in the east part of Eurasia and the west part of Eurasia. So I really would like to develop the peace collaboration, the peace cooperation between East and West uh, of the Euro uh, uh, Eurasia continent. Thank you, Shane. Good evening. I think it's very important today to put the importance of diplomacy in the spotlight. It's absolutely incredible that after two and a half years of war, hundreds of thousands of dead and destruction all over, the European Union, which says it aims at peace, has not taken a single initiative to bring about this peace and to stop the killing. That's an absolute shame that needs to stop now. The war, uh, the, the arms, the sanctions, they have not brought peace closer. Yet the entire world, Brazil, China, South Africa, Turkey, so many countries have insisted on diplomacy at the European Union stays deaf and blind to these calls. That needs to stop now. And secondly, we need to stop with double standards. We cannot have a European Union that pretends to care about international law in Ukraine, about human rights in Ukraine, but then closes its eyes and continues to support Israel in what is now a genocidal war denounced by the International Court of Justice. This needs to stop as well. Thank you very much. This evening and throughout the day, we've talked about the importance of diplomacy as a critical tool and about our toolkit of delivering peace. But in that sense, we've talked about the importance of going beyond diplomacy. Diplomacy now, but a project that we can own and we can build across the world, from Japan to China, South Africa to India, across Europe into my home country, United States. And that project is a project of non-alignment, a new non-alignment movement is not purely transactional in nature, trying to secure a best deal for itself from competing great powers. It is not territorial in nature, trying to defend a version of sovereignty while others commit offenses abroad, but a transformational vision of non-alignment, a principled vision of non-alignment that not only promotes diplomacy and peace as a project that can apply to its various members, but also takes those same principles and builds the basis for social, economic, political justice in our respective countries from which we come today that will guarantee a future that leaves no room for the bellicose forces of the far right, the extreme center that are galloping forward across the Atlantic today. Thank you. The media often anesthetize us to the effects of war. We see the figures, we count the dead, we count the injured, and people argue about the figures. 
how many Russian soldiers were killed, how many Ukrainian soldiers were killed, how many people died in Gaza, how many people died in Sudan or anywhere else. When someone dies in a war, a mother grieves, a father grieves, a brother grieves, a sister grieves, a child grieves. When they're dead, they're gone, and people are desperately upset and sad as a result of that. The political leaders have totally failed to even try to stop the war in Ukraine. The European Union didn't do all it could and should have done. The United Nations failed to intervene when it could and should have done. All praise to the African Union, to the Pope, to some presidents around the world, particularly President Lula of Brazil, for making the effort to try to bring about peace. What we've done today is agreed a declaration of citizens who want to see a diplomatic end to the war, a ceasefire, a process that will bring about some kind of long-term settlement, as we want to achieve in other wars as well. And so today, we make this statement, we appeal to people to come forward and support it. And above all, we appeal to our media to stop listening to the arms manufacturers and the so-called experts as to how the war may play out, may do this, may do that. Stop listening to the armchair, armchair generals. Instead, start counting the cost of war, the human cost of war, the environmental cost of war, and the psychological cost of war on all of us. Our statement today is a declaration to start a movement for peace and an end to the war. Thank you. Rosa Luxemburg, can I? Uh, because I am sure she's around. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I will promise her that we will do all our best to make uh, this uh, engagement, this commitment which we make to work and support the project that, which is included in this appeal, that we will realize it. And I hope uh, uh, she's going to help us from where she is, I don't know. Just a word from Ukraine. Uh, um, war is a crime against humanity, and therefore I am determined not to support any kind of war and to strive for the removal of all causes of war. Uh, today, uh, we uh, uh, adopted important resolution uh, for ceasefire and peace talks, uh, and uh, we need to remember uh, that uh, for uh, stopping the bloodshed, for stopping the killing, uh, people uh, must not uh, believe uh, in some sort of miraculous uh, power of killing uh, and uh, miracles of uh, violence. For a set end, uh, a, a lot of educational work, uh, dialogue, uh, and uh, uh, countering uh, disinformation with truth and love is needed. So let's work to achieve peace.